Siapa lu? Welcome back everyone. Today we'll recap a 2022 Indonesian supernatural horror film named Satan Slaves 2 Communion. Before we start, it is a request to please like and comment on the video as it will help us to grow our reach. The movie begins in 1955, when we see a journalist named Budiman brought to a police commander named Major Haro Kusuma. Haro asks him to come inside as there is something he wants him to see. Budiman enters the place and gets shocked to see many dead bodies in a room. He clicks their pictures, and outside. Haro tells him that after this the dead bodies will be buried back and this place will be cleaned up, as if nothing had happened. All the leaders from around the globe will be here tomorrow. Budiman asks him why did he bring him here to which Haro shows him footmarks going towards the place, to which Budiman says dead bodies can't. Haro says something sinister and dangerous is happening, and he wants him to tell people about it. Otherwise, no one will find out. He has ordered from the top to keep his mouth shut and get rid of all evidence. Now four years after they managed to save themselves from a terrible incident that made them lose their mother and the youngest Ian, Rini and her younger siblings, Tony and Bondi, and their father leaves in flats. Rini says she is moving out of town for college tomorrow, and she could ask her friend to give them a place to stay. To which Bari says they are not going anywhere, as it's safer living in an apartment building. The news then shows that tomorrow there will be heavy rain accompanied by a storm in the North Jakarta area. Now at night when Rini goes to throw the garbage, she notices that the doors of all the flats are open, and their neighbors are acting weird. She gets scared seeing this and when she turns after throwing the garbage, she finds her neighbor staring at her, and then they go back to their flats. Next, we see a boy named Wisnu goes to throw the garbage. He hears a voice from inside the chute calling out his name and asking him to open the door. Wisnu gets stuck there but manages to come out, and then someone starts banging on the door, and then an entity haunts him. He runs back to his flat terrified and we find that the ghost was of his father. Here Rini and her brothers are sleeping in their flat when their TV screen becomes static and a lady appears in it. Next, we see Budiman finds a box in the office which was sent to him by Haru. He had committed suicide a few years back, and had collected some of the evidence relating to evil for almost 30 years, and from now onwards he gives the responsibility to Budiman. There are also some photos in that box, in which a photo is also of Bari, and Bari is one of the people who took him to meet Haru. He then finds the photos of the building in which Bari and his family are living currently. The scene now shifts to that building where people are waiting for the lift. A woman takes something out of her purse and accidentally some of her coins fall down on the floor and enter a hole. Now all of them are in the lift when suddenly the lift stops, and some girls who are playing there see the coins of that lady there. They start picking them up and the lift starts coming down. Those people somehow open the door of the lift and send Vishnu out, after which the lift falls down and except for one girl, all the other girls die. Now many people die in this accident, in which Bari's neighbor Ari's father is also there. Bari was also injured. And when he comes back, we learn that he is the only one who survived. Rini says she is going to take care of Wisnu as his relatives are not here yet, and all the funerals will have to wait until tomorrow. Here Budiman stops a taxi to go to Mandara apartment, but due to the storm, he refuses to go there. Just then a man tells him that there has been an accident in Mandara's apartment. Here Tari is listening to the radio in her room, in which people are calling and dedicating songs to their families. Just then a caller says that her name is Tari and she wants to tell her mother that it hurts. Her grave is so small. She is all tied up and can't move and maggots are eating her flesh. They keep coming to torture her and she asks her mother to help her. Now Tari gets scared hearing this and suddenly the radio stops. She then hears some sounds and sees herself there and tries to flee. But she finds Tony at her door and she asks him to throw the radio away or keep it to himself. Here in Wisnu's flat. He tells Rini that his father died last year in a fire in their rented house. His dad was a bad man and his mom and he wanted to get away from him anyway. They made secret sign language so that he won't understand them. He then shows her a book that he and his mom found in a bookstore. He then says he heard she had a brother of his age. But Rini does not say anything. Here Bondi comes to Ari's flat and tells them that it is impossible to go out because of the flood. Suddenly the light goes off and they hear someone saying may you bow upon him who will soon be born. Ari lights the lighter and his sister tells them that the voice came from the door. 
But when he goes out to check, he finds no one there. Hirini says she will go to her house to get the candles, and asks Wisnu if he wants to come with her, to which he says he will stay here. Meanwhile, Tony was going home when he meets Ostad on the way, who asks him to help him check on the victims. Now while they are going to check the flats, Ostad back begins to hurt, and he asks Tony if he can go check on the elderly couple on the 13th floor. He asks him if he wants a flashlight or a matchbox. Here Bondi and his friends enter the neighborhood chief's place, and here they learn that this building used to be a cemetery, and all the photos there were dated 17 April. But the years were different. They realize that today is the 16th of April, which means something is going to happen tomorrow. Here Tony reaches the flat of that old couple, and he sees that the window of their room is open. When he goes to shut the window, the matchstick extinguishes, and when he lights it again, we see the corpses looking at him. He shuts the window, and while leaving there, he sees that water is dripping on one of the corpses. When he goes to move the corpse, the matchstick goes out, and when he lights it again, he gets terrified seeing the corpse looking at him. Only then Dino comes there and asks him for help. He takes him to his flat and shows him a hole in a wall. He says his fork fell to the other side and asks him to get it for him. Tony enters the flat through the hole, finds his fork, and gives it to him. But when he tries to go back, the cabinet falls from his feet. He finds a photo album there and gives it to Dino, and in another album, he finds the photo of his mother Maorni Suwano, and also records of his mother. He gets terrified seeing it and comes out of there, and Dino tells him this album consists of pictures of their building. On the other hand, Kari notices someone in her house, that disappears the next moment. Ustad then reaches there checking the flats, and Tari offers him tea. She tells him that she feels something is haunting her. Ustad asks her to pray and no other creature will mess with her. Now after Ustad leaves, Tari goes to wash up before prayers, but suddenly she notices that the place has changed. But when she washes her face again, everything becomes normal. Now while she is praying, the place changes again, but she continues to pray. And after a while, we see a pakong behind her, and then it turns into many. Tari gets terrified and flees, but Tony and Dino reach there. Here Weena hears some sounds from outside, and she sees someone standing in the hallway. As she moves towards it, she is haunted by the ghost of three girls that died in an elevator accident. Someone then throws a stone toward her, and she is again haunted by a ghost, and she finds the door of the flat locked. Suddenly her mom calls her, and Weena starts following her. She enters a lift and the door closes behind her. And when she lights a matchstick, she is haunted by those girls again. Only then she notices that she is hanging in the air, and then she falls down. Here Rini steals keys from his father and takes out a suitcase from a cabinet. Tony then reaches there with Tari and Dino. They all then come to Dino's flat where Tony shows Rini the album he finds next door. He says they are the same people he showed her in their mother's album. He then shows her the other album and says they were all in this building. Tari says something haunted her when she was praying. Tony then says that Ostad told him to check the dead bodies earlier, but all the floors are empty. Like all tenants just disappear, where they are gathering in one place. He then shows her their mother's photo, and Rini says she was looking at some old family pictures this afternoon, and this is not how mother dressed back then. Dino asks her what's in that suitcase, to which Rini says their father always takes this bag wherever he goes, and whenever he gets home, he locks it inside the cabinet. They then guess the combination and manages to open the lock, and inside it, they find a lot of fingers. They all get terrified to see them and flee, but only then Rini says they have to find Bondi. She asks them to go ahead and she will find him. But Tony and Wisnu say they will also go with her, and Tari and Dino leave there. Rini and Tony come to Ori's house looking for Bondi but they do not find him there. Now while leaving there, they hear some sounds from inside the house, and when they go back, they find Weena going to the washroom, and Rini says they should take her with them. But when they go to get her, she disappears. They get scared and only then do they hear some music from inside a room, where they find Weena's mother hanging. Here Bondi and others enter a flat, where Bondi gets terrified to see his dead brother Ian. Only then do Rini and Tony also reach there and they too get shocked to see him. The scene shifts and we see that all the corpses are getting up and disappearing. Here Tari and Dino reach the ground floor and find that the area is filled with water, and they can't leave because the water is electrified. Tony tries to leave there, but Tari feels she should have been with the others so she leaves there. Now when Dino doesn't find a way, 
he jumps back to the stairs and encounters Maori there. And as he touches her, she disappears. He picks up her clothes and when he tries to throw them, it flies back and covers him. She then haunts him, due to which he gets imbalanced and gets killed. Tony says if that's really Ian, he is the devil's offspring. To which Rinny says if Ian is the devil's offspring, then so are they. Meanwhile, Wisnu enters the house and asks him what he is doing there. To which he replies he doesn't know. Rinny and Tony also enter there and Rinny asks him if he knows who they are. To which he replies they are his siblings. They take him with them and start leaving from there. Tari on the other hand also gets terrified to see a Pakong in Maori, and she runs into Ostad. She tells him about the ghost, to which Ostad tries to calm her down and says these things do not exist. But Tari then shows him the Pakong peeking from behind a wall. Ostad goes to check it and Tari hears a cracking sound. And when she goes to check on him, she gets terrified to see his neck broken. Fearing it, she runs and hides inside a chute. But there too she is haunted by a ghost fearing that she falls down and dies. Here Bari stops Rini and the others and tries to explain that everything thing he did is to keep them all safe. It's all his fault, because he is the one who got their mother to have a deal with Ramanam. Rini asks him what's that in his bag, but only then Ian comes in front and Bari tries to attack him. It becomes dark and someone says may you bow upon him who will soon be born. Only then do they see a ghost there and flee, and they all get separated. Suddenly Rini is knocked out by someone, and when she wakes up, she finds herself in the hall, where she sees a group of cult chanting something, and Ian says to forget everything and leave happily, and then he makes her eat a leaf. She then wakes up in a big house, and we then see her in a class, where a teacher says that she scored the highest mark this semester and she will get a scholarship to the Netherlands. The teacher comes to her and asks her to forget her family so she can live happily forever. She can have everything she ever wanted. Rinny says no and she wakes herself up and vomits out the leaf. She then sees her father dying in front of her eyes. And when the cult tries to kill Tony, Butaman reaches there and attacks them. And when Ramanam tries to attack him, he drives her away. Wisnu pushes Ian and tries to control the cult and Rinny attacks and knocks down Ian. They then free other and escapes from there in a boat. Here Butaman reveals that their father was a police officer. Back in 1955 when he was on duty. He found out about Ramanam's cult. He asked their mother to join the cult, so they could have children and their mother could be a star. But when he tried to terminate the deal, it cost him a lot. He had to kill a thousand of people and he became the executor of mysterious shootings. But it wasn't as easy as he had thought. They targeted their father from the very beginning, and their mother only served as camouflage. This isn't just about their family, but a much more sinister agenda is brewing. The next day, we see Darmina and her husband arriving at the same flat where Tony found the photo albums. She says they should have been here last night, to which her husband says they have to let last night's events happen. People will get confused as to which side they are on. Here it is revealed from their words that they have been together for many centuries, and then we are shown a photo from 1955 on the wall, in which we see both of them, and the movie ends here. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon never to miss new video updates. Thanks for watching.